Hello there. Um, I'm going to talk about lots of cryptic stuff today. It's actually a weird time for my walk. I'm not so back on my normal walk. That's basically because it's about 25 to 8 at night. I haven't managed to get out today before now. One, because it was pissing it down with rain. Two, because I've been busy. Um, and three, because I was a bit knackered. I only had two hours sleep. So if the eyes look a bit heavy, you'll know why. Um, hope. Hope's a wonderful thing. It can also be your downfall. Now, let me explain a little bit what I mean. I'll put it into an, uh, an allegory so you know where I'm heading with this. Now, up ahead, there's a lot of horses in a field. And there's horses in a field about 100 yards behind me. Those horses live in that field. It scares the living crap out of them going out the side of the field. Why? Because they're scared they're going to fuck up. Scared they're going to get hit or hit by a car. That somebody's going to scare them. You know, standard animal things. So in a way, hope is useful. That horse that's up here hopes that one day it'll get out of that field and go to a different field. No, it will go to a different field at a different time of the year. But a horse isn't intelligent to know that. It doesn't have the foresight at the time. So in a way, starting out in 3D, in fact even further on, being advanced at 3D, um, is a bit like being a horse. No, it doesn't mean you get an incredibly large penis and get covered in hair. What it really does mean is that regardless of your level, there are times when you can get to the point where you're scared of doing something. I've talked about this a few times and I've tried to put it into the right context each time. And I don't know whether I've succeeded or not. If I haven't, leave a message and I'll try and rephrase it again. Now, a lot of you know that I prefer sculpting. Why? Because I'm good at it. That's basically it. Right? It's one of those things, I'm, I work in three dimensional form much easier. I'm not a big fan of polygon modelling. Now it doesn't mean I can't do it. Just that I don't very often. So I thought today it was about time. I started doing some more low poly models again. Not for any particular reason, just, just for me. I had like you know, a couple of hours going spare, you know. And I noticed as it's been a little while since I did any heavy polygon model, I mean anything other than a biped, right? Um, I'm a bit rusty. And you start getting the bit where you hope that you're going to improve and get back to where you were. But you're also, like a horse in the field, scared that you're going to make a mistake. So, that's basically why I'm covering that. Now, I've been doing 3D a long time. I can polygon model, you know, standing on my head usually. But sometimes you have, you know, times where you haven't done it for a while and you get rusty. So then, to some degree, it's like going back to square one, right? Um, it's the same as if I sculpt. Uh, let's say lots of horses. I spent six months sculpting horses for a client, okay? Then I came to do a human being again, or a biped, I'm likely to start feeling the same thing. I'm likely to think, well, wait a minute, it's been a while since I've done this, can I still do it? Self-doubt. Self-doubt is a big problem. Um, so I suppose what I'm saying is, uh, well, I suppose a quote of uh, a small green guy called Yoda, fear is the path to the dark side. Um, fear is the enemy. Polygons aren't your enemy, ZBrush isn't your enemy, nothing in 3D is your enemy. You are your own enemy. I'm my own enemy. Simple as that. Now I should point out, for those that are eagle-eyed, oh, what a nasty cold sore right there, see, right there, which has become infected. Now I get these every time this time of year, always becomes infected. The doctors aren't sure, I haven't got a bloody clue, so I just put up with them. Normally I hold up in the ground and don't do anything on video, but I thought, well, what the hell, you know, there's not a lot I can do about it um, right now. So, uh, one thing I should mention, before I go any further, and I forget. Um, you remember me mentioning about uh, my mate John McIntyre? Goes in the name STPQ and Poison and a few others. Um, was in for a karaoke competition for the was it Daily Mail or the Express. Anyway, he, uh, he won his competition, alright? Won his section. Uh, managed to win the Country Western section. So, nice one, John. But I still told you it was a federal in because the person who actually won didn't enter the competition. Mm. So I can see all this shit, because I never went in for it, no, you know, that sort of side of things. So there you go. Um, John did a really good job. And I know something nice will come of the um, recording session he's got, you know, in the studio. He's got a damn good voice. I only watches these, so, you know, best luck, mate. 
Now it's not far, I don't know, about 20 minutes off sunset. If I can catch it on camera, I'll show you because it is an absolutely beautiful sunset here in the Derwent Valley. Um, and tonight's a rather nice night. As I say, it's been, you wouldn't think it's been pissing it down with rain all day. Um, but I'll just have a quick look and see uh, what time it is. Now, you might have a bit of a close up horse shit in the meantime. Oh, five minutes. And I can't go up there into Esh and talk because it's full of posh people and they don't like me talking. Right. Granted, I've not actually tried, but I'm not about to risk it, you know what I mean? Um, so, hope can be, hope can be good. Uh, now, I'm living in hope for the time when we get out of this house before too much longer and we move into the new place. And I get a nice workroom all to me. Uh, not like the current workroom, where other things are in the workroom, but a complete dedicated workroom. Alright? Oh, I'm dripping with sweat here. You'll have to excuse me because uh, it's rather close and sort of muggy the weather. Um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to it. It's been. I feel like I've been here a million years. We've been in Langley Park, um, let's see now. It, we moved here the day before my brother's birthday, so it was the 21st of February. It was about three years ago, three and a bit years ago, because Kane's come up to three. Uh, Cat was six months pregnant at the time, and within six months we wanted to be out of the place. We couldn't get out of here. You know, it's one, it's one of these places you'll never leave. It's like Royston Vesey for those that have ever seen the TV series League of Gentlemen, right? Um, and I didn't really fit in round here. Neither did Cat, neither is Kane. You know, it's Kane doesn't like round here because basically the, a lot of the kids, um, they're not the sort of kids he he likes. You know, he likes kids with, who've got a bit of brain like he has. You know, there's nobody on either side of either family that's you know thick as a brick. We're all reasonably intelligent. Um, so when you're an adult, you know, you get used to the idea of people come in all shapes and sizes, both mentally and physically. But as a child, it's more difficult to understand. Besides, I want to be closer to um, sort of family and stuff because there's a few members of my extended family that have got kids his age, you know, um, which have come in handy. Besides, some of them actually haven't seen him yet uh, because they live as far away. Now, if you look over here, I'm going to try and aim this to the horizon, right? I'll try and zoom in. I don't usually zoom in because this is crap for zooming, right? But you see right over there, right? Actually, about behind that hill, about four, six miles behind that hill, right? That's basically where we're going to be moving. It's not a million miles away, uh, but it's rather nice. What time is it? Oh, not three minutes yet. So I'm rather looking forward to it. Now I'm not looking forward to getting the pack and stuff like that. I haven't even started the packing yet. I did buy um, some black bin liners to put clothes in and things that basically we didn't, weren't going to need. You know, like old clothes and you know paperwork that I knew I wasn't going to need. You know anymore. Just basically bin stuff, right? Then Kean, in his infinite little wisdom, decides to hide it when me and Cat were out of the room for five minutes. Now this kid is a master of hide and seek. Kean hides something, you'll never find it. So the chances are we won't find these bin lines until we've moved. So I'll have to buy some more. And this time I will be learning and keeping them somewhere safe. Um, so there. Uh, I've been doing a lot of um, sort of stuff, uh, trying to wind a film some of the articles of 3D total. I didn't get all of them done like I was going to. Basically, life conspired against me a little bit, but uh, I've got the next one handed in. Uh, it starts to look a bit more like the final project. It's weird because I'm doing it and I don't want to have a name for the model. Um, I should call it Birdman, but you know, it looked less like a bird, Birdman as it went on. Um, now, I am slightly tempted because this was done last year, at the end of last year, and I feel like I've came on six million miles since then uh, artistically to re sculpt the later stages into something different. Now I'm not sure how 3D Tool would say that one because they've already been put using the image in their like flash banner advertising. Um, hmm. We'll have to see on that one, won't we? Uh, I'll have to see what they feel like. Because uh, see, that's one thing about being um, a writer um, as well as an artist. Because you get this point where things don't see the light of day till a long time after you've done them. Right? You might have done a model six months a year before and people don't see it until then and that's the problem because by then you've shot off you know artistically the distance and are way past that but that's the standard people think you're at now I've had that problem for about a year now where people think I'm at a certain level because they see stuff that was recorded some time ago and usually stuff that was recorded in a hurry or stuff that you know even the articles I record what I'm doing and then just take the screenshots it's easier you shouldn't be giving away these trade secrets but you know what I mean I think anybody with a brain would work that one out um, 
so the stuff that I'm on doing at the moment, it does dishearten me at times when I'm thinking, well, if people could see what I'm working on, you know, they'd see there's a light year difference, but I'm not in it for other people. I suppose in some ways it is nice to be able to just occasionally for somebody to say, you know, you've really came on. You've still got a long way to go, you know, but you're coming on well. Because I think I'm the only guy, uh, apart from Glenn Southern, uh, who admits that because DVDs it admits we do not know everything. Nobody knows everything, right? Anybody who says they are are talking bullshit. <laughs> Nobody knows anything, you know, everything about anything. We all just have our own opinions and our own perspective on life. Um, so that's the way it goes, really. I'm going to see what time I've got. Right, I'm up to go because it's getting very short. Let's catch the next one.